Let's just start with the peso. Is that shorts coming off or some conviction? Which one is it? Well, the first thing to note is that it's very liquid at the moment. The peso has been very liquid for a long time. Um, and the closer we get to the election, the more that's going to matter. So the gaps will be bigger. If now suddenly news comes out in the other direction, we'll gap up again in the dollar against the Mexican peso very quickly. But I think, broadly speaking, clearly anything that suggests that Clinton will win is good news for the peso and the, the direction makes sense at least. Let's talk about that gap. So if you take a look at the Bloomberg here, I've charted what happened to Sterling uh, in the month of June, so you can really see that gap. It's the white line here on the chart. Overlaid with that is the blue line, and that's the dollar peso, but that's just for the month of October through today, so a different time frame for you. And you can see sort of the gap that we did see, but to the upside for the peso. What kind of gap can we expect if we see a Trump victory on Wednesday morning? Well, that's a good question because what we don't know yet is how the Mexican authorities would react. In the UK, there was never much of a chance of intervention mm -hmm. by the central bank. Uh, in Mexico, there is a good case for the central bank to intervene. Uh, the question then becomes whether they wait and see where, where the dust settles before they take action or whether they try and preempt uh, a very large move. But the, the options market at least suggests you could get a very large move, 5% five, five or so almost immediately. Um, I think though that you'd find the central bank would try to do something about this. Quickly. You talk about illiquid currency pairs. That's the big difference between the Brexit debate and this one. Cable is one of the most liquid currency pairs on the planet. That one, not so much. And given the time that this could come out, the result that it could come out, what are the concerns around all of that? How do the Mexican authorities set themselves up for those kind of things? It's difficult because obviously this is an unprecedented situation for them as well. Uh, I think what they will be thinking about is the trade-off between spending money up front um, to try to signal to the market that they're there, that there's not much for the market to really do here, um, or waiting to see how far the currency falls first, let the market exhaust itself a little bit before then coming in to try to act. I think at the moment I would lean on the second side myself. Uh, there was a comment recently from the finance minister actually arguing that spending money now is, is like drops of water in the ocean, not much use in this market environment. So I think that's, that's really the trade-off for them. Uh, as I said, personally I would go with the second option. I would wait and see how the market reacts first, wait for the explosion, and then come and try to calm things down rather than try and preempt anything. To, to follow up on Jonathan's question, what do we know about their ability to intervene, whether it's sooner or later? Have they lined up, for example, lines of credit with the IMF? Do they have resources that if they want to intervene, they have the ability to do it? That's right. Mexico does already have quite large foreign exchange reserves that can be used for this purpose. That's, that's helpful. There are also, as you mentioned, lines of credit with the IMF as well. Clearly, the global community will be quite happy to help Mexico in this situation as well. I think other financial officials around the world would be, would be uh, receptive to any, any uh, requirements from Mexico's side on that front too. Uh, bottom line is we believe Mexico does have the resources to calm the market down after the initial uh, shock that we might see uh, on a Trump victory. Medium term though, the issue doesn't change. If, if Trump really does try to move uh, against NAFTA. Um, there isn't really uh, enough in the bag in terms of reserves or in fact would Mexico want to stop the pace of falling under those circumstances if Mexico were to have a, a structural growth shock for example. So I think we'll have to differentiate a little bit between what they do on day one yep. in terms of intervention and what they might do uh, over the course of a year for example where perhaps they'd be quite happy to let the pace of fall.